All right, guys, episode two, Necromunda Tactics. Uh, we're going to call this one Pain in the Arsenal. So let's get down to business and talk weapons. Um, this is a personal preference thing for me. This is what I like. This might not be what you like, and that's okay. You guys find what you like, what works for you. But here's the things that I use a lot in almost all of my gangs across the board. These are setups that I use uh, very commonly. So first thing we're going to go into is the uh, long rifle. And I like to use either an infrasight or the photo goggles to assist with that. And then a bunch of smoke grenades. Uh, and those grenades are going to be on other Jews and gangers uh, that are going to move forward and chuck those where I need them. So that they can move into assault positions with pistols or close combat if they're set up for that. Uh, my K-Door, K-Door guys are set up in that way um, with smoke and then a long rifle uh, champion. Um, I also use that in my Deloc gang, uh, same setup there. And I also have the same thing in my uh, Enforcer gang. So all those gangs use a long rifle with, a, I believe, Infrasight most of the time. I think it's the Deloc gang that has the photo goggles that they can choose. And then guys with smoke grenades after that. Next, we got our double tap pistols. So my favorite stub gun wielding warriors are the Jews with their weapon skill usually not being amazing. Having that plus two to hit is great. Giving them two of them, it's going to be minus one to shoot both. But if you can get around outside of cover and get those shots off at close range to get the plus two, it's going to be a great uh, day for you with those stub guns. Um, on gangers, even better if they can get that plus two and be hitting on possibly a two plus from a four plus to a two plus gets really good really quick. And uh, I guess this is kind of where we need to talk about stub gun versus auto pistol. Um, that's kind of kind of be your balance there because uh, you have to choose which ones you like. Now, I usually choose what's cheapest for that gang. If, if the stub pistols are five credits while the auto pistols are 15 or so, I believe, a lot, with a lot of the gangs, kind of standard price, then I'm probably going to go with the stub gun. But if the auto pistol is a cheaper option or an equal option, I'm probably going to go with the auto pistol, mainly because I love rapid fire. I love that ability to roll my uh, ammunition dice and get two, three hits sometimes with that, uh, with that shot. It's, it's just really good to, when you get the hits off and you roll that three hit die on the, the ammunition die. When the, uh, with auto pistols, I love all of my... Gene Steeler Colt is pretty much the Colt of the auto pistol, auto gun. Every, every, I think every character I have has an auto pistol or an auto, auto gun on them, if not multiple. Um, both of my champions have three auto pistols that they can use because they have that third arm. And that plus gunslinger is amazing. So you're ignoring that minus one uh, for guns blazing. And you are shooting three rapid fire one auto pistols you know, weapon skill or ballistic skill three, it gets really good, really quick. Now you're gonna have to get in close. So you, you got to armor those guys up, use smoke grenades so they can pop outside that smoke and light somebody up and, and are covered until then, uh, stuff like that. But don't be afraid to get, get, don't be afraid to set up even a champion with, uh, auto pistols cause they can get really good when they're getting hits. Last of the pistols that we need to talk about is going to be the flechette pistols. They have a special role, mainly with the Deloc, because that's who I'm thinking of that can take those uh, pretty regularly, just off straight off, uh, you know, but when you build your gang, I said army a lot in episode one, it bothered me, so I'm going to try and say gang as much as possible for these, so... And with that flechette pistol, you can use solid ammo at rapid fire one, and they're silent, or you can use the Fleshbane ammo, which is a toxin weapon, um, which may help if, uh, because it's going to be strength three with the solid ammo. If you're fighting, uh, say, Goliath or something that's going to be a toughness four and you're going to need fives to wound, uh, consider using that toxin instead, also a silent shot. Um, so the, these are great weapons for those, uh, you know, hide and seek missions 
where you're sneaking around and you need to keep it silent. Um, and so always have a guy or two with that. Um, I, we will talk about kind of having that, that redundancy factor of if you, if you have a good weapon, always have two of them in the gang um, running around so that in case that one guy goes down, he's not your only chance at killing that, what are they called, ambot or anything like that because he was the only guy with a, with a crack grenade launcher. So make sure you have two of everything if you have a good weapon like that. I think that covers the pistols. Oh, no, let's talk about the plasma pistol. Also an amazing weapon. Good in combat. I wish, <laughs> I wish like the rifle, that it had uh, rapid fire, but it does not. But that's okay. The strength 5 in this one is probably the best. And it gets a plus 2 at short range, which is 6 inches. So 6 inch uh, short range, not horrible. Um, that's more than the auto pistol the i'm trying to think i want to say it's eight inches for the stud no it's six inches for the stub gun too so same as the stub gun six inches plus two doesn't get much better than that uh take that thing whip off some shots at close range and cook those guys with uh two wounds or damage two and uh strength five that's going to cut through almost anything minus one uh to their armor so if they're going to have a five plus they're going to you know, now be a 6, or if they're 6+, plus, they're not getting anything. And that's most of the time what you're going to see. There are There is more armored things running around, but uh, that's most of the time what they're going to be hitting on is, is either knocking their 5+, plus to a 6, or a 6+, plus to nothing. Um, so that's another amazing weapon. Now it costs much more than all the weapons we just discussed. So it's more of almost like a special weapon pistol. Let's move along. All right, smoke. Uh, is going to be the first of the grenades that we're going to talk about. I love smoke. I usually kind of pick a 50-50 between um, incendiary and smoke or between photon and smoke. And that's usually with my uh, Kador uh, gang or my Deloc gang. So taking that smoke, this allows your uh, assault guys, those, those close combat and pistol wielding warriors to move forward safely without getting sniped by that long rifle on the other side or those las guns shooting 18 inches on the other side this is going to protect them they can stay in that smoke bubble they can use it to move across hallways they can use it to move from terrain to terrain by chucking a smoke in that way you don't get picked out by that champion that has overwatch or something like that because you can run through there and not be seen so this smoke is very useful and for multiple gangs um, to be able to protect yourself and get yourself close before they can get their rifles in on you and, and use their range against you. But this is also why you need to have those photo goggles and uh, what are those called? Infrasites. So consider taking those. Um, now the antithesis of the smoke is going to be those photon grenades. So the photon grenades are almost a flashbang. They use their... I want to say it's flash ability. I can't remember what the what the what the actual term um, that it uses for when it hits them. Now it's going to be on their initiative, which, like we talked about last time, is going to be like when you're when you're retreating from combat. Most initiatives are about a three plus or a four plus throughout all of the gangs. Some of the Escher have a two plus. So even so, Escher would probably be the least affected. By a photon grenade because most of the time they're going to be able to make that two plus and not be affected for their uh, leader and Jews and uh, I think the champions have two plus otherwise they have a three plus so even that is not great so you have about a one third chance of them failing that with a three plus but those guys with the four plus those corpse grinders those Goliaths those guys you get them in a pack you get think of it this way you use one action to throw the grenade and it's going to steal if you get two guys it's going to steal both of their actions because they completely lose their activation marker so that's one action to take away in the enemy's four actions now if you get three guys clumped together um then you're going to take six actions that gets starts to get ridiculous if they fail all those initiative saves now let's say they they're going to fail 50 percent, so hopefully two out of three will fail on average now if you get lucky, you might get all three. Who knows? You just, it just depends on what you see. That is something to consider. Always look for those clumps of guys and don't 
be afraid to waste an action, I guess, or in throwing a grenade and trying to clip those three. Best thing is this is a five inch range. It's huge. That's that five inch, uh, blast template. Um, you, especially if it's inside, uh, uh, you know, tunnels or any sort of areas like that, where it's the second it hits a wall, it's going to stop and explode still. So if they're packed inside something like, what am I trying to say? A zone mortalis hallway it's not going to be able to scatter very far away from them most of the time on a D6, uh, you know, average three inch away from them. If you set that right in the middle, hopefully it's going to go diagonally into a wall or sideways into a wall near them. And then uh, it's going to still clip all of them. Even if you rolled a six, if it goes into that wall, it's going to stop and explode. So don't be afraid to use those photon grenades. Finally, the incendiary grenades, probably the best option for the Kador gang um, is that's who I use them with. Um, using things like the uh, ability to set the guys on fire, it still has a great damage to it. Uh, or strength three, damage one, blast five inches. That five inches is the key part there. I love all the grenades that have a five inch blast range on them, like the photon, the smoke. It also gives the blaze to those that are hit, which is going to cause another strength three, one damage, minus one AP wound to uh, anybody that's hit by it or, or continues to get hit by it every turn. If they want to lay down and be stunned, uh, then they have a better chance of, I guess, stop dropping and rolling and getting themselves out, uh, the blaze condition to go away. But otherwise, if they're standing, if they're in combat, stuff like that, they're just going to keep taking that and hope that they can uh, knock it out with a six. So it, to put themselves out with a six is, is very rare. Uh, I'll talk about that a lot. I'm not a big fan of things that happen on a six. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a weapon just because it does a thing on a six because you're going to roll that once every six rolls and that's not amazing especially for probably what you're paying for it so there's a lot of these abilities that aren't amazing but hey it's a good bonus when you get it but having to roll a six while standing to to put out the fire that gets tough quick now you get a bonus for having people around you your friends around you to, to give it it's plus one per stuff like that and then of course like i said being stunned or seriously injured on the ground is going to give you a plus two to that roll so now it's a 50 50 so um but now you're forcing the enemy to lay on the ground, which is going to, he's given up an action just to do that. So he's using an action to put himself out pretty much. All right, let's talk about rifles. Uh, this is the age old debate I feel in Necromunda is to be, uh, do we use las guns or do we use the auto gun? And I think it's going to be different for every gang out there. Um, much like the auto pistol and the dub gun, it, it almost depends on what is cheapest for that gang. For Escher, they have the cheapest las, uh, las guns in the game. They should use them. The pros and cons of the las gun is going to be you get one shot. It's not rapid fire, obviously. Um, but the pro of it is that you can take those those add-on abilities you can take you can silence it you can uh, add on the the power pack that makes it stronger what other things you can add the mono sight which is gives you plus one to your aim bonus so now your aim gives you plus two which gets really good and oh yeah by the way it has an 18 inch short range we're going to say short with some uh, quotation marks around it because that is not very short 18 inches um, so it has the longest short range of any of the rifles pretty much that you're going to see out there um, and because of that long short range I, I rarely don't get a plus one for the range with when I'm using my las guns. Um, while with the auto gun, I feel like I rarely have the plus one for my auto gun because I, I stay out around 15 to 18 inches. Like we talked in the last video, you don't want to be up in their face within eight inches, maybe uh, 11 inches if they have a versatile weapon or something like that. You want to stay back so you don't get yourself charged. So staying Outside of that 10 inch range is right about where you, you're going to want to be in in cover so that you uh, don't get shot, don't get charged. And most of the time that's going to put you outside of that auto auto gun short range. Now, let's talk about the auto gun and the pros about that. Obviously, it same long range, but that short range is is 
worse at eight inches. That's that's tough. Um, but that plus one can be bumped up using aim, get a guy in position, stick him in cover. Now he's just going to sit there and shoot with his auto gun every turn. He's going to aim, fire, aim, fire every time he, he comes up with his activation. And that will make up for that not having the short range bonus. Also, by the way, if you hit, you might have a rapid fire two or three hits to it and that gets devastating quick even with a ganger or a juve shooting that thing when you get the hit and you have the 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 good roll on the uh ammunition dice wow you can wreck people with the with getting three hits even just two hits is great um, so it makes up for it a lot of the time finally the last thing i'm going to talk about is web weapons the web weapon is great and the main game that's going to see you're going to see that in is going to be the escher i feel like Gene Steeler Colt should get it, and I hope one day they do add it in because the Gene Steeler, Steeler Colt miniatures have web pistols and have web guns, and that's who I stole them from to put them onto my guy instead of buying the uh, the Forge World stuff. So I feel like it's silly when the miniatures have that weapon to not allow that in their uh, in their rules. So hopefully we'll see that kind of change come through eventually one day. Web weapons. Uh, work differently and they, they skip a save roll when they get hit you you don't get that save roll and it can pretty much seriously injure the guy using a template hit so you're gonna auto hit you're gonna oh yeah skip the save roll and seriously injure them so it, they're they're ridiculously good because of that so hit them with the template or even better hit them with the uh, uh, the web gauntlet which has backstab which we'll talk about here in a bit and, and it gets really good really quick because now you have that uh, that three plus goes to a four plus so your 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 strength goes up due to the backstab um, the web gun itself has strength five it's silent and it uses web obviously so the strength five on the web gun amazing because it's a huge web i guess with the uh, template you you can't lose with the web gun you get as many as you can on there it's hard to start with a web gun maybe take a web fist for some of your guys starting that delock gang and we'll talk about that during gang creation in some other videos but uh can't pass up you want to get as many web guns as you can all right let's talk about weapon traits First, let's talk about backstab. There's a lot of weapons, mainly melee weapons, that have a backstab trait. And this is going to be when you're outside the vision arc of one of the uh, enemy. You get plus one to that attack. Things like the fighting knives, the power knife, the web gauntlet, as we talked about, those all get ridiculously good. And it's really easy with the way that that vision arc works to get that attack in on those guys. When you charge... You know, most of the time, those guys are either going to be engaged with someone else. They're going to be, I mean, maybe they're facing you because they know you're coming if, if possible. But those, <laughs> I'd say if they're facing you, you're probably doing it wrong. They probably need to be facing and exchanging fire with someone that's in cover, that's harassing them, trying to pin them. That auto gun guy who's also in cover across the way from them. And they're, they're pinging back and forth while you're Escher with, uh, you know, the fighting knife is slowly moving around getting in behind them or hopefully a power knife um, moving in getting around them so they can charge in and use that backstab ability next is going to be the disarm which is kind of an axe ability if you will a lot of the axes have the disarm and that's uh on a six like we talked about it's only on a six the target can uh they can't use their weapon uh on the reaction so again i wouldn't count on getting this when it when you get lucky and roll the six amazing you know you're fighting that uh corpse grinder cultist and all of a sudden you knock at, uh, you know you disarm him with the six on the attack now hopefully you're going to have multiple attacks which gives you multiple chances of rolling that six but you can't count on the six the main thing is you got to remember that you have it because if you do roll the six and you and you forget that oh yeah that axe had disarm then you're going to be in trouble. So the way I think about it, I always think I associate disarm with axes because almost every axe that I can think of has it. If you have an axe, it's probably going to have disarm on there. So think when you roll those dice that if you have a six, hey, let's check. Does that, this have disarm? Yeah, it does. It's an axe. So that way you remember to use it. And that way when they do their uh, reaction attacks, they're going to have to use fists against you instead of those cleavers um, or, or, or other horrible weapons that they'd use to cut you apart if you didn't kill them in the first attack. So next is going to be Entangle. 
this is going to be a flail ability. I can't think of anything else that has it other than the flail, um, but it's a favorite of mine because I use a lot of flails. I use them in Orlocks. I use them in Kador. Um, so that allows you to ignore their parry and just period. And then on a six, again, you have to roll the six, their reaction attacks are at a minus two if you roll it. So um, that gets really good. When you get that six, holy cow, it's going to be really hard for them. Even if they're a good you know, weapon skill three uh, fighter, if they get reaction attacks, now they're hitting on fives. They're as bad as a juve all of a sudden because of that flail ability if you get the six. So again, be thinking about entangle when you're running in with that flail. Remember that they can't parry. So when they're like, hey, we roll that one successful hit you got because of the parry, you say, no, it's a flail. I don't. I ignore it. Also good for that. So that's kind of an always uh, ability that, that it has. Of course, let's move on to the swords. And that is the parry ability. Again, much like the axes and disarm, almost all the swords that are, you know, be it power sword, regular sword, so letter sword also has parry. So yes, every almost every sword in the game is going to have parry. So it's associate parry with swords. That way, when you see that sword, you know it's coming. Um, it allows you to make the enemy reroll one successful hit, which gets ridiculous, especially if they have one successful hit, or it starts to take away their ability to really, really pound you into the ground and roll three injury dice and get you know get that auto kill with it. Um, so you want to minimize their ability to damage you, Perry does this, period. Um, especially if you're fighting that Juve with one attack when he reacts. Oh, uh, he got a successful hit on his 5+. plus. Well, you got to reroll it because I have Perry. So it's going to protect you, and that goes a long way. So this goes on the sword, the chain sword. The chain axe also has Perry. Um, the power sword has Perry, which also has its power abilities, um, which uh, we can go over. So power weapons cannot be parried, much like the uh, entangle weapons. And if they roll a six, uh, a natural six, then no save can be made against them, and it's damage increased by one. So if it's a wound one weapon, which most of the time I think those swords are mostly going to be that, now you're doing two damage. So again, power great, um, good thing to use with that power sword. Finally, let's talk about uh, versatile. The main thing that I use that's versatile is probably i don't play goliath uh, a whole lot i have a goliath gang but i think i've thrown on the table maybe one time so i think the renderizer has uh versatile you no, know, it does not so it is it doesn't have a range so the, the only weapon i use with that but i love them is the shock whip of the escher i have a, a champion who runs in with dual shock whips because I want to keep the same range. There's a reason for that. I'd love to be able to have a pistol if you could shoot at range um, because she can charge and do the versatile rule. I can charge. It pretty much adds three inches onto my uh, charge because of the shock whips long range of three. So now not only does she move five plus D3 plus three more. So that, that gives you a great range. And now both those shock whips can attack. I can divide the attacks between them. It's dual weapon, so that's plus one to the attack. So I'm hitting with three, four, five attacks with shock whips. And that strength plus one, it, it gets really good. Now if you get close, actually it's a minus one, so it's, it's bad for you to be in close. Um, but good for you to just be at your regular range of th two, three inches. And also, by the way, they can't attack back. If for some reason they survive that um, and they're still standing, then they can't reaction attack back unless somehow they have a versatile weapon that also gives you two, three inches. And there's no reason to move up that close. To keep yourself back at just inside three inches so you're, you're, you know, you're close enough to, to use it, but you don't have to engage them. You count as engaged for them so that you can pull off that charge and get the plus one for the charge, but they are not engaged to you the, the other way around, um, So, which is how it reads in the rules, and you they cannot strike back, so they're not going to get their reaction attacks back, which is amazing. Then you can dodge out, or I guess really you, you don't even have to dodge out because you're not engaged with them in the other direction, so they, can't, they couldn't even hit you as you walked off later uh, the next turn or whatever if they've already gone. So consider all of those. Those are all my favorite uh, ballistic and weapons, uh, I guess weapon, ballistic skill and weapon skill weapons that we've gone over. So please let me know if you guys have other things that are your favorite. I know a lot of people are fans of shotguns. I know a lot of people are not fans of, of 
flame uh, the flamers, but the flamers string four. I I think I like the flamer. I know it gets a lot of uh, uh, harassment on online, um, but you guys let me know what you think. Let me know if you guys disagree. Let me know what you you know if you agree with me, um, so we can have a conversation on here and and figure out what works best for everybody. I hope you liked it, and uh, we will see you guys for episode three. Static out. <laughs>